What's going on guys? Today we have an amazing topic and we're going to be talking about guided defense. Now guided defense is a term that's not talked about very often but I'm going to try my best to break it down so that you guys can understand. A lot of times when we go out and do skill work um, that is known as block practice. Pretty much block practice is with no decision making and we're focusing internally either on mechanics or we're focusing on making a certain move or a certain footwork and that is great and we definitely need a lot of block practice to begin with but when looking at what actually transfers over into a game it's a lot more than just that so remember block practice is definitely something that we need to get tons of reps in in order to develop mechanics in order to develop possible moves in certain situations but if we just stay there then those particular skills may not or probably won't translate into a game. So we're going to be talking about how we take a particular skill that we're trying to teach a player and make it so that it has the best chance into transferring into a game when it matters most. So I'm going to be using a particular skill which is we'll just say it's the one two step off a pin down and I'm going to go through the entire process on how we use it um, step by step in order for it to transfer into a game. So. The first step that we do is exactly what I mentioned before, it's block practice. I'm gonna tell the player, maybe spin it out to themselves and catch it either left, right, and then go up into a shot, okay? I might even pass it to them so they get that coordination in order to build the confidence so that they don't really need to think about it. Again, when we're talking about block practice, it's very little decision making and they're focusing primarily on themselves, their uh, body parts, or their footwork, okay? This is not usually what happens in a game, especially with good players, because what good players are gonna focus on is their surroundings, especially in a game, okay? So we have to remember that. So once they got the footwork down, what we're gonna do is we call added load. So just like a barbell, when we're working on strength conditioning, trying to get bigger, trying to get stronger, you add load, and that load is weights. It's either adding more weight uh, with dumbbells or with plates or whatever uh, form you guys use. Same thing has to be added when learning a skill. Pressure has to be added in this case. So from here, say I'm coming off a pin down, okay, and I'm trying to get my player to learn the one-two step. What I'll do is I will have a player follow them all the way until they catch the ball and do the one-two step, and then we'll leave them alone and have them shoot. Now you might be like, well, this doesn't happen in the game. It's exactly right, it doesn't happen in the game, but I'm slowly adding load for them to learn things like spacing, things like coordination, things like speed. So lightly guarded, guided defense, the defender is partially there. Okay, so the player's doing great. They're knocking down uh, eight out of 10 with great footwork, it's looking smooth. Let's add more load now, okay, to make it more game-like. So now the defender is pr uh, fully present with restrictions. What do I mean by restrictions? So uh, for, th for this one, they may have caught the ball, go into one, two step, and the defender backs off. Now from here, uh, when we add the load, the defender might stay there the entire time and put a hand up without blocking them. So this allows them to understand, okay, I need to shoot over this height, I need to be able to shoot this quickly, but at the same time as a coach, I'm looking for what we're trying to teach them, which is what we call key performance indicators, okay? So I'm looking at if they're able to take the footwork that I taught them and able to apply it while the defense is present but not fully live yet. Then finally, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go live with restrictions, okay? And for this one, we're gonna add more participants. And the reason we wanna add more participants is because it's closer to what they're actually going to see in a basketball game. So I'm gonna tell the offensive player, all right, you're gonna catch it in a one-two. You can either shoot it right there or you're gonna rip. So there's only two decisions that you can make to really, really simplify them. Uh, it for them because I want them to very quickly make a decision so that the defender has to read the offensive player rather than the other way around. Okay, from here, again, they can shoot, the, the catcher or the, uh, the shooter can shoot, or they can rip and go. If there's help defense, remember there's another person present, am I going to take it to the rim or am I going to pass it? So right there in one drill, there's two different sets of decision making that we need from them. What is skill? Skill is simply a decision, plus technique. We've grouped the technique up here, now it's time to add in the decisions. Okay, and then last but not least, we're gonna either play something like a two on two, like we did before, three on three, four on four, and if they're really confident, five on five. But we love to use small sided games to make sure that everything that we teach our players is going to do its best to transfer for over into five on five when it matters most.